All right, good, uh, good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. So I'm going to start by calling our meeting to order. Um, to begin our meetings, I'm going to ask you to join me for a moment of silence before Pledge of Allegiance and then roll call. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next we will have roll call. Commissioner Jones, whoa, here. Commissioner O'Connor. Commissioner Lanier. Present. Commissioner Rappart. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Present. Mayor Bliss. Yes. And then um, before I get to the next part, is there someone here from Union High School that wanted to say a few words of welcome? No, not tonight? All right, then I'll just say uh, thank you to Grand Rapids Public Schools. Oh, thank you for hosting tonight's meeting. And our city clerk just reminded me that I need to ask for a motion to excuse Commissioner Moody, who is out of town and not available to join us tonight. Can I get a motion? So so support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, so again, uh, welcome to our commission night out. We do this every quarter. We rotate around the city into the different wards. So we're happy to be on the west side tonight. So thank you, first ward commissioners, for welcoming us to your ward. Uh, and I just want to go over a few roles with you tonight in case this is your first time attending a city commission meeting. Uh, and I want to make it really clear that our city commission meetings, we take great pride in making sure that this is a safe place for people to be heard, regardless of their opinion and what they want to say, um, as long as it is uh, clean and respectful. So there are rules. If you have a city commission agenda, right on the very front page, we have the rules of our public meeting. Uh, and we're going to ask you to respect those and respect the space and respect one another. Uh, and so you'll see those rules here. And we'll get started tonight. We have a couple opportunities for public comment. So we have the very first opportunity. And when I open that up, that is very specific to public comment on items that we're actually voting on today. So earlier today, we had four standing committee meetings. And during those meetings, we uh, discussed and voted on a number of city issues. And those are all included in the agenda. So the first opportunity for public comment, which I'm not opening just yet, but I want to be really clear, that first opportunity is if you are here to speak specifically about something that we're voting on. So a couple of rules for that one. We ask uh, for all public comment that you come forward. There's a microphone right up here with a podium. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in. Um, you'll be given up to three minutes to speak. And for the first public comment period, we ask that you um, point out and specify what item that you're talking about so that all of us can and follow along. We do have four scheduled public hearings tonight. So if you are here for a, one of the specific topics that I will read, those public hearings will be a little bit later on in the agenda, and each one I will open up uh, separately. So we have uh, one item tonight about uh, approval of a special district planned redevelopment district for some property on Coy Avenue. That's a scheduled public hearing. We have a public hearing for the Uptown Business uh, Improvement District Plan. That's a separate public hearing. And then we have two public hearings on um, the Michigan uh, MDNR Trust Fund grant application. One is for Garfield Park and one is for the Hastings uh, Trail. So if you're here to speak on those four items, I'm going to ask you to stay put and not come up until I open those up. And then at the end of the meeting is public comment. You can come up and speak about whatever is on your heart or mind. Okay? So we'll get started then with the first opportunity for public comment. And um, again, this is for items that we're voting on tonight. So if you're coming, if you are here to speak about something we're voting on, this public comment period is open. You can come forward right here to the podium. And I want to warn you that um, as you come down, there's a little step. So there's a white piece of tape, so please be very careful. We don't want anyone to trip and fall. All right? Oh, I'm sorry. And our city clerk uh, appreciates it if you sign in. So we ask that you write your name down, and that is just for record keeping so that in the minutes we have it correct. Um, so if you're here to speak on something uh, that we're voting on, now's an opportunity to come forward. Uh, so, Mr. Miller, you have to come be, be really careful about that step. Yep, come on down. Good evening, 
fellow veterans and, and citizens. This is the City Hall is the house of the people. Watchdog Mellow reporting. Uh, welcome to the west side where our bus routes uh, 12, stop star 12, the uh, crutch kicker 18, uh, uh, right outside the door, do not go, go downtown. And it's the same thing with the uh, uh, Alpine 9, uh, which is half of the downtown uh, route has been cut out, no post office. And uh, the uh, Skyjack 7, America's dumbest bus route. 7, 2, and 5 uh, should be, uh, those would be helpful if those two uh, communications were available. Uh, respecting those citizens to see what their take is on it. Uh, 8, 1, and 2, the city remains uh, recklessly overbounded. Uh, 9A1, public safety collapsed. Uh, uh, at the last meeting uh, a week ago, uh, there were only two officers there. You had uh, 50 officers at, at uh, uh, the last May, uh, May Day parade, uh, the uh, Legal Aliens March. Only two uh, at that city commission meeting. Oh, you have a phone, you could have called people in, you could arrange for reinforcements from Wyoming, Kentwood, uh, the county uh, troopers, and so forth. Uh, B2, uh, uh, which uh, unit is, is this? Um, I think I recognize the others. What, which one is the Grand Monroe Project? A, a former uh, GRPS uh, school. Like C4, on 4th Street, p please elaborate uh, what, that's, what that's about. When you get to it, uh, 739 4th, uh, uh, off straight. Uh, C7, uh, uh, illegal aliens uh, continue on the housing issues, continue to their house hogging. The bouncy illegal aliens, if you had the courage to do it, our house hogging, uh, housing uh, situation would be far less great. D23, uh, but still resolutely opposed uh, and nonsense up at Walker View, uh, miles out of our city. Uh, we'd, we're still down 10 to 12 bus routes, quarters in this city without service. It's irresponsible land use to go up there. Uh, this is apparently Cabela's property that Cabela's rejected. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, thank on you, Mr. Miller. my other thank handout, I. Oh, yep, we have them right in front of us. Spell, uh, we spell local Eastimos with three O's, three O's, not two. I, I screwed that up, three O's on local Eastimos. Thank, thank you, Mr. Miller. All right, anyone else who wishes to be heard on items that we're voting on? All right, seeing none, we're going to close that public comment period and we'll move to approval of the minutes. And these minutes are from our meeting that took place on February 26th. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. Support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It carries. All right, next that will take us to petitions and communications, and we have five items tonight. The first communication received from Deidre Deering, president of the Monroe North Business Association, <coughs> expressing support for phase two of the Hastings Trail. That is received and filed. Communication received from Reverend L. Haystack, expressing concern for a recent incident involving the Grand Rapids Police Department. That's received and filed. Communication received from Tara Gonzalez, expressing support for the proposed Coit rezoning. That's received and filed. Communication received from Alan Otis, expressing opposition to the proposed Coit Square rezoning. That's received and filed. And communication received from Elias Lumpkins regarding recent developments and setbacks in the Grand Rapids Police Department. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to reports of city officers. Well, the Comptroller's report for the period of February 14, 2019 through February 20, 2019 in the amount of $9,918,931.46. Received and filed. And the Treasurer's report for the period of February 9, 2019 through February 15, 2019. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda. So our consent agenda are items that we voted on this morning at one of our meetings and there was unanimous support. So with one voice vote tonight, we'll adopt those items. Can I get a motion for consent? So moved. Support. support. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, it carries. All right, next that will take us to our scheduled public hearings. And so we will start tonight off with our very first one. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider an amendment to an approved 
uh, SDPRD, and that stands for Special District Plan Redevelopment District. And this is located on the east side of Coit Avenue between Fairbanks and Trowbridge. So what we'll do is we will start off the meeting. We'll give our planning director, Suzanne Schultz, an opportunity to explain this project. Uh, and then, if, if Suzanne, is there someone here with the project who is also wanting to speak? Moderman here? Anybody? Yeah, he's here. Okay, so then we'll, we'll allow um, the developer to come up and say a few, words, a few words, and then if you are here to speak on this project, you can come up after that, and if there are unanswered questions I'll, that we can answer tonight, we'll ask them to come up and respond. So, Suzanne, you wanna tee this off? Yeah, um, the properties in question, this, it's, it's actually an existing PRD that you've reviewed before. On April 12, 2016, the City Commission approved uh, a PRD to facilitate a multiple family redevelopment project of between 32 and 39 units, uh, with the final number of units depending on buyer's unit size preferences. Um, the, on March 28, 2017, uh, the City Commission approved an amendment to the plan to remove 210 Fairbanks from the redevelopment project and modify the proposed attached townhome style buildings along Coy Avenue with individual single or two family dwellings. The boundaries of these areas um, for the PRD is on the east side of Coit Avenue, across from Coit School, between Fairbanks and Trowbridge Streets. The amendment uh, that you're hearing tonight is a major amendment to that PRD approval from 2016 and 17 that I mentioned. It would change the boundary of the PRD by adding 646 and 648 Coit Avenue Northeast to the development and increase the number of dwelling units to up to 50. So from you're going from between 32 to 39 for up to 50 units. Um, we did have a number of comments uh, from the neighborhood. The neighborhood was um, in support. You do actually have in your petitions and communications today one letter in support and one letter in opposition that the City Commission received. Um, the Planning Commission um, took this under consideration and did make some recommended changes to that on the plans from Naderveld. Um, they recommended that the facade materials wrap around the sides of the buildings that the modesty walls uh, should be moved back a minimum of three feet. If you look at the larger designs, there are parking lots placed in between the units fronting on quite, and modesty walls were added to the facades of the buildings to try to conceal the parking. The Planning Commission was concerned about the massing of those fa facades on the street and whether they felt too big and wanted some more differentiation on the facades. Um, they wanted the plan shall reflect that the focal points of the rear buildings include high quality materials of fiber cement, masonry or other similar materials. Focal points are considered those areas visible from the public right of way. And they also requested that the front porches have a minimum depth of six feet. And so those recommended amendments to the planned redevelopment that uh, the developer has proposed are included in your resolution for consideration. And so this is for the public hearing for this and then it would come back to you on March 26th for consideration. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ronneman, you wanna add anything to that? <clears throat> Welcome. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm, my name is Jason Voss with RJM Properties. Uh, I work closely with Joe. Uh, just like to say a couple things about the project. Um, we've worked really hard with the Noble uh, Development Board on this. Um, six to seven meetings, um, weeks of communication with them. Uh, we feel like we have a great project. Um, for not only the neighborhood but also for the city. So we're just really pleased and uh, we're looking forward to forward progress. All so, right. Thanks. Thanks. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right. So if you are here tonight to be heard on this project, now is an opportunity to come forward. Uh, again, we ask that you share your name and the city that you live in. We'll give you up to three minutes to speak. So if you are here specifically to speak on this request, uh, now is an opportunity to come forward. Hi, Hello. welcome. How are you? Gretchen Warnemont, I live at Belknap neighborhood. Um, I also sit on the development committee. Uh, Jason and his partner have worked overtime. They have committed themselves to this project. Everything has been in order from day one. They're um, 
honesty on how they want to do things and communication with our development committee has been awesome and they've done a lot of changes and modifications for this project to accommodate certain things. Um, the only thing that I had personally asked was for low income families mm -hmm. and if this project does go through there will be some property there for low income people. However, with that being said, and this is nothing to do with Jason, um, this has to do more with you guys. Um, your uh, paperwork that you guys came up with for low income stability, I'm sorry guys, but it's really a bust. Mm -hmm. um, it does not cover everybody. You're leaving a whole entire section out for the very low income. So when you guys go through all this paperwork, they don't make six figure incomes. So what you guys consider low income is not low income. So I'd really like you to appreciate my position when I say that I think you're trying to do the right thing. You're just not there. And we can't just have that one form of paperwork done and help the ones that really do need it. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, others who wish to be heard? Hi. My name is Eliana Bootsa, and I also live in Grand Rapids. I serve as the executive director of Neighbors of Belknap Lookout, and so I wanted to reiterate a few points. Uh, I did recently share a copy of the support letter we sent to the Planning Commission with our commissioners, Ruth Kelly and Joe Jones. Um, one of the really fantastic parts of this particular design is it brings back the streetscape from the original design, which was rezoned a number of years ago. Um, to clarify um, about the sort of lower income housing that's available in this project, there are five micro units included, which should fall within the affordability level for people at 80% of the area median income. Um, and the changes made at Planning Commission are very much in line with the further requests that we had during the development process. The only item that really remains unaddressed is very much the same as, as Alan expressed in his letter of opposition in regard to the density. And certainly we're hopeful that some of the units will be able to be sold in pairs. Um, so you have a larger unit for a larger family, uh, bringing the total density down. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your work. All right, others? Hi, my Hi. name is uh, Angel Gonzalez. I uh, live in Belknap, and I am the, uh, the developer of the previous two renditions that were approved by the neighborhood and then the city commission. I really just want to speak to the, the tenants and uh, the people who live there in the units. Um, we were, um, we, we've had some large-scale developments that have come through Belknap, the Gateway, Trowbridge Lofts, uh, GVSU, Grand Valley State University. And at, at the time that those projects came, our company handled the transition from the current residents to the point when they had to transition out of those units. Um, we go above and beyond. We, we, you know, we live in the neighborhood. We, we know these people. They're our friends. Gretchen is a friend of mine. Um, and with the current residents, we're going to do the same thing. We're committed to them. Even though it's going to be a new developer, they've committed to honor the agreement that uh, we shared with the city commission uh, several years ago that kind of outlined um, the steps that we would take for our tenants. Um, in this case, we have some long-term tenants that have been there for a really long time, uh, two in particular that we're gonna go above and beyond and try and help them with uh, some down payment assistance so maybe they can get into a home within the neighborhood. Um, it's something that we've talked about for years. Um, and then with the other tenants, we have a lot of college students, so they come and they go. Uh, they're here you know, one year and then they're gone the next year. But uh, we do plan on accommodating them as we said we would, and uh, to the extent that we need to go above and beyond for some of them, uh, where the situation calls for, we will. So I just want to reaffirm that from us and on behalf of the developer, they also have committed to uh, honor that agreement as well. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. All right, others who wish to be heard? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close this public comment period and we will move to our next uh, public hearing. So the next public hearing is a public hearing on the Uptown Business Improvement District Plan. And so to start us off, I'm going to have Mr. Cloister come on up. 
Uh, he is with our Economic Development Department, and then it looks like we have representation from uptown, so we'll give you a chance to speak as well, and then we'll open it up for public comment. Good evening, Mayor and City Commission. My name is John O'Closter with the City's Economic Development Office, and I am here to briefly introduce the public hearing on the, uh, on the, uh, <laughs> Uptown. Uptown. <laughs> business, Uptown bid. Uh, bus, Uptown business bid. Improvement District uh, Special Assessment Renewal, two-year yeah. renewal. So I want to note that that is uh, unique this time. This, this um, special assessment has been going for several years. And because the board that has been in place feels comfortable with the assessment and the work that they're doing, that they are coming to you with a request for a two-year renewal for the special assessment. Included in your packet is the Business Improvement District Plan, which includes all of the uh, items that are required by law, including the um, assessment rate, which is $5.46 per foot. That is the same as, the, as last year. Um, and the details around some of the special properties that front on several streets are treated uniquely, as well as the assessment that's related to government and nonprofit property and the voluntary assessment of those. So there's also a description of the services that are um, undertaken and funded by the, by the bid, and I will let one of the board members, Lynn Hopple, talk more about um, what the board has been up to the past couple years and tell you about the successes that they've experienced. Great, thank you. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hi, Hi, I'm Lynn Hopple. I own Easttown Veterinary Clinic and I am the former chair of the Uptown bid, and this year I'm the vice chair. So I am in front of you again this year to kind of give you an update as to uh, what we've been doing. Uh, all of the successful things have occurred. The business district is vibrant, but what I really like uh, to bring up is last year the city commission approved the creation of a nonprofit organization called Uptown Grand Rapids, Inc to help bring the business and business districts and neighborhood associations into closer collaboration for planning and executing product, uh, projects in the area. And that has been wonderful. The board consists of residents and business owners of the five neighborhoods and four business districts, plus representation from the city's economic development department and the neighborhood business alliance. So, Last month, we're really excited, the Uptown Grand Rapids Inc. Board adopted a five-year strategic plan with four goals. Uh, first goal is to sustain economic growth in the local economy while preserving the distinct character of each of the business di districts. So we've seen phenomenal growth. Um, and we'd like to keep that going while continuing to keep the character that we like of each of our business districts. Next is to attract people through placemaking and activities that increase the desirability and vibrancy of uptown neighborhoods. So we've got several events that we do uh, that uptown puts on that really brings in a lot of people that may not have experienced the uptown business district before. They get a chance to visit and think, hey, I want to come back here. Um, and oftentimes they do. To accelerate and enhance the city's strategic uh, strategies to improve mobility uh, to Uptown and within Uptown and this is something um, that we've got some plans for and we're really looking forward to collaborating with the city uh, for these projects because there's really a lot of cool things that can be done in Uptown and is in a position to, to do those things and lastly to establish Uptown Grand Rapids Inc. as the collaborative planning management uh, and fundraising organization for Uptown, its business districts, and neighborhood associations. And really, at this point, we're just asking for the same rate uh, for the special assessment for the bid, because as our SID funds continue to improve, uh, there are areas where we can shift things that the bid previously funded to the SID under the laws behind the SID, and then continue to give services for the bid to offer. Um, you know, in, we're in the midst of winter, snow plowing is always something that comes up. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Um, commissioners, any, any questions? 
All right, all right. Uh, so if you are here tonight to be heard on this public hearing, uh, again, related to the Uptown Business Improvement District, now's an opportunity to come forward. Same rules apply. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in, and we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. So is anyone here to speak about Uptown Bid? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close that public comment period, and that is referred to Committee of the Whole. All right, next that will take us to our third public hearing, and that's a public hearing for the 2019 Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant application, and this is for a project at Garfield Park. So we'll start this off with our parks director, Mr. Mark Watt, and uh, then we'll open it up for public comment. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor yeah. and Commissioners, uh, City Manager. Um, Pleased to be introducing this grant opportunity with the uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources. This is for a splash pad specifically at Garfield Park, which was identified as a part of the PAC, uh, Parks Master Planning process back in 2014. And uh, with community support and community advocacy, we're pleased to be bringing forward this application to support this amenity for Garfield Park. Yeah, it's an exciting project. Commissioners, any questions? All right. So if you are here to be heard on this project and application, now's an opportunity to come forward. Hi, welcome. Hi, uh, Michael Skolton. Um, I'm board president of Garfield Park Neighborhood Association. Just wanted to um, say thank you to David and to uh, Kari Enriquez and Catherine Zitzi, particularly at the, at the city for their help with this project. Um, it is a priority of the neighborhood um, and uh, we welcome everyone's support. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your work. Others who wish to be heard on this application for Garfield Park? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close that public comment period, and this is referred back to Committee of the Whole. I'll now move to our fourth public hearing, and this is a public hearing for the 2019 Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant application for Hastings Non-Motorized Trail, and this is for Phase 2. So we'll ask... Uh, our parks director to kick us off again and then and then maybe uh, if you can just add timeline on when these will be submitted and when we'll hear that would be great you bet uh, so this uh, second grant application is for Hastings uh, Street linear trail extension um, this is a great uh, neighborhood connector but also a nice connection down to our riverfront uh, trail system uh, both this grant application and the Garfield Park grant application will be submitted to the state of Michigan on April 1st of this year. We should find out whether or not we're awarded these grants uh, by June of 2019 with um, monetary award in December of 2019. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if you are here to be heard on this application for the Hastings Non-Motorized Trail Phase 2, now's an opportunity to come forward. Are you coming up, Mr. Miller? No? Okay. All right, anyone? <laughs> Eliana Bootson, Grand Rapids Neighbors of Belknap Lookout Executive Director, back again. This is so exciting. We are waiting for this connection. It's a key element of our strategic plan to advocate to you that we want this. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, and thank you for your work on this. Anyone else who wishes to be heard on this grant application? All right, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close that public comment period, and this will be referred back to the Committee of the Whole. All right, so that will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. Uh, this is public comment about anything that is on your mind. Same rules apply. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in. We'll give you up to three minutes to speak, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Oh, and our city clerk asked me to remind you to sign your name so that he can get that right. Don't start it, Mayor. I've got to get situated. All right. Okay. Take your time. Yeah, it's okay. Take your time. My name is Johnny Brandt, business in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I'm a staunch supporter and a proud supporter of the Grand Rapids Police and law enforcement. Um, I know there's been some opposition groups, citizens that have issues uh, with support for, like myself, I've heard it before, for the for the police department, um, but I respectfully don't care. Um, that's operative, uh, operative word is respectfully. Um, I know that it was a very unfortunate incident that occurred with the uh, military officer, um, and I'm not going to speak to that much, too much, so 
some of the people with me will. We have uh, formed a group called the Voice for the Badge, and we will be active, very active, in making things better for them and working hard to uh, TV8. TV8. Yeah, I don't want that there. Um, we will be uh, advocating things for law enforcement that are needed. And one is more officers. I don't know how many times this has got to be said. You spend about $300,000 in research and consultants to see the needs. And I, I just don't, I, you're endangering the city, the citizens and law enforcement. I mean, I just don't understand it. But we're going to be the voice of the badge and we're going to make things happen. Um, as far as, uh, I, again, I said last meeting when I was here, I applaud uh, First Ward Commissioner John O'Connor for his staunch support of law enforcement and knowing and realizing the needs. I'm uh, going to support him for re-election. I would like to say uh, in regards to uh, Commissioner Ruppart, um, at the last meeting I thought, actually you gave me good humor for about a week because we had talked about the police and the needs and the problems for about 10 minutes and then when your comments came in you thanked the snowplow division. What about our police? I mean, I don't, I'm going to run against you. I'm going to run against you next election. We need law enforcement supporters in Grand Rapids. Well, okay, hold on. I'm going to be very firm on the rules tonight. We have rules about clapping and about respecting one another. This is going to be a safe place for everyone to speak regardless of how you feel. And everyone needs to be heard and they need to feel respected. So please um, go back to the front page and uh, review our rules, please, and uh, be mindful of those and respect those in this space. So, yeah, the, uh, Mr. Miller, uh, his name is um, Mr. Johnny Brand Sr. You two can talk afterwards. I'm going to give him his time yeah. back so he can speak. Thank you. Thank you. But okay. everyone has a right to be heard in this space. Yeah. Okay. And, okay? Understood. Understood. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I was very surprised that uh, Commissioner uh, Moody. Um, and he, I don't believe he's in attendance tonight, but uh, he had said uh, after the uh, unfortunate incident that occurred with the, uh, with the military person and the, all the details on that, but he had said that uh, the people have spoke, you know, uh, Chief Kittle should, uh, should do what he should do um, and, and what the demands were from those people that were here in unprofessional outburst. Um, laughing and speaking during the chief's talk up here it was unprofessional. I'm not going to be unprofessional. But for him to say that in the same paragraph, uh, we thank, need to thank, find out more about you. this. Thank, thank you. you. I know you're so strict on rules. I, I understand I'm, I'm going to try to that. make sure everyone, I learned a lot from last week, and you we're did. trying to well, make sure everyone okay, is, is heard. That. Thank I you. Thank you, Mr. Brand. Hello, welcome. Good evening. My name is Elena Gormley. I am a member of Congregation Ahavis Israel, and I am an early childhood educator at the United Jewish School. And I am an incoming Master's of Social Work candidate at the University of Illinois Chicago Jane Addams College of Social Work. I am here tonight because, because you, Mayor Bliss, have shown an unbelievable amount of fragility about how the community has responded to the actions of Captain Kurt Vanderkoy, who racially profiled Hilma Ramos Gomez, a U.S. citizen and Marine veteran. Mayor Bliss, you seem to be more upset at your meetings getting disrupted and not getting to follow your precious agenda than the, the way you want than the, the fact that a GRPD officer attempted to deport a U.S. citizen, made racist comments, and has a history of harming the immigrant community in Grand Rapids. I will remind you that no group has successfully fought against injustice and oppression by politely asking people in power to stop harming them. This is very personal to me. I am Jewish. And historically, there's been a lot of Jewish people who believe that anti-Semitism would end if they just followed the rules and showed that all those around them that they could be good citizens who didn't cause trouble. They all died in pogroms and genocides. You are a social worker by profession. 
Do you think Jane Addams would approve of your cowardly behavior and capitulation to corrupt and racist cops in the GRPD? Immigration and Customs Enforcement is run in opposition to every single one of the NASW's Code of Ethics, the same Code of Ethics you supposedly follow. How can you say that Grand Rapids is a, quote, welcoming city for immigrants when you allow ICE thugs to rip apart families and traumatize children? You have fashioned yourself as an advocate for children and previously worked with abused and neglected children. I also work with children who have lasting trauma from a parent being deported. If you fail to stop this depravity, you are complicit in child abuse. I am reiterating my, de my demand that you and your colleagues exercise the bare minimum amount of human decency and fire Kurt Va Van der Koy, cease all cooperation between the GRPD and ICE, guarantee that no city resources are used to inflict ICE violence in our community, and support the statewide campaign for driver's licenses for all. Mayor, I'm basically asking you to do your job. If you don't want to do what is asked of you, I would suggest that you find a new line of work, preferably one that keeps you far away from some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Thank you. All right, others who wish to be heard? Oh, that's a good idea. We'll take turns and we'll go back and forth. Sorry about that, I didn't see that you were waiting. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi, my name is Sam Snelling. I live about five minutes down the road from Grand Rapids here. Um, I was pleased to hear the well-worded thoughts of community members on the 26th. Community dialogue and the ability to learn from the experience of others is essential to our society. <laughs> it is important to know that not everyone believes as you do and to be able to civilly discuss these differences so opinions can be changed. I want civility to prevail. Hearing members of the crowd openly talk over Jiret and boo interim police chief David Kittle while he was giving his official responses is not what these meetings are about. Conversation rather than degenerative shouting matches must be the standard that we hold. A handful of protesters shouting until a single meeting is brought to a halt does not constitute the will of the people. Tactics calculated to shut down discussion rather than letting others speak and allowing the city to continue managing its weekly needs cannot become the norm. Last time when C city commission met, February 26th, the group of people came to shout about an item that wasn't on the agenda and in less than a week, the sheriff has changed policy. There have been no other meetings. There have been no opportunities for dialogue to occur. Leaders have heard the voices of a few screaming people uh, that were so unruly that the meeting had to be shut down. And then before anyone was given an opportunity to retort, the sheriff changes the way that our city cooperates with the federal government and city council members are claiming that people have spoken. I can no longer remain silent at the risk that the shouting opinions of a few will stand as the position of the majority. At the urging of Captain Mike Maycroft in his press release on February 26th, I am making my support of the Grand Rapids Police Department known. It is my belief that, I further, that further undermining the Grand Rapids Police Department by city officials will exacerbate the perceived community of mistrust. I urge you to stop seeking any additional punitive actions against Captain Kurt Vanderquay. I am deeply concerned with the statement of city spokesperson Amy Snow Buckner regarding the recent dismissal of warrants for protesters over running police lines. The quote as shared by MLive on March 1st states, in light of the global conversation about immigration at the time, the city attorney determined it was reasonable and in the best interest of justice to dismiss any charges against the individuals who disregard instructions by our police officers. This excuse of lawlessness cannot become the norm. It reads as a standing invitation to openly disrespect and disobey law lawful orders of police officers. It is good and proper for citizens to know their rights and to insist on proper treatment whether or not officers are behaving inappropriately. But pardoning open refusal for reasonable boundaries set by officers cannot be allowed. Community trust is based upon the rule of law. Excuse of, global, of the global conversations is a dangerous moving target. What will be the next issue and to what degree of infraction will the city allow? As representatives of the people who elected you, you must put the needs of the citizens first, and it is imperative that the law be followed. If we find that the law is unjust, let us work together to change it. But if our leaders cannot be trusted to uphold the law, how much less will the community? Community members, I urge you to behave with civility towards all. Regardless of what opinions a person expresses here, they have the right to be heard by their elected officials, and certainly all city officials have the right to be heard when they address those they serve. City leaders, do not begin changing policies based on the shouting matches and attempts to short circuit other opinions from being expressed. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm going to come to this side and then I'll come back over here, Mr. Townsend and DeAndre. Okay. Hi, welcome. Hi there. I'm Kenny Duke. I live in Lowell, but I work in, uh, in Grand Rapids here. 
So uh, police officers devote their life to the community by saying to get to the people I serve, you have to go through me. But there's also a very intellectual aspect of policing not spoken about much. They must be experts in thousands of laws, court cases, policies, procedures, and tactics in order to make split-second, life-altering decisions constantly and be able to clearly and concisely document the processes so lawyers, courts, media, and laymen can second-guess the decisions for years and do all that while not getting shot, stabbed, beat up, sued, fired, divorced, or bitter. People drop what they consider buzzwords to sound intelligent in these second guesses. Terms like probable cause, reasonable suspicion, preponderance of the evidence, profiling, etc. Can anyone here pro give me a clear definition of probable cause? What le level of suspicion does it take for a police officer to stop a person or a vehicle? Probable cause, right? Wrong. A lower level reasonable suspicion is required. I submit that there are many other similar terms, but I'll wager that everyone here has a strong opinion concerning them. How can we have a logical, productive discussion when people don't even know the definition of the issue they're discussing? As to the captain taking action off duty, so we don't expect police officers, especially salaried command staff who are on call 24-7 to respond if they see a possible violation when they aren't on the clock? Does that only apply to incidents involving uh, people of color, or does it apply to bank robberies, rapes, murders, etc.? Not my problem, I'm off the clock. Instead of taking the easy way out, jumping in the I hate police bandwagon, Maybe we can educate ourselves on the intricacies of the issue and submit some concrete proposals for real-world solutions. Or we can chant, chant F the police. I'm sure that will be equally as productive. Feels way better, and it gets better ratings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. How you doing, everybody? My name is DeAndre Jones, Safe Pitch Task Force Winner 2018. Um, I am very honored to be here. Um, I stand here as a proud volunteer of Union High School. I actually have my badge on, so I feel pretty comfortable being in here um, talking in this setting, to be honest. Um, I actually work with some kids that actually went to the school when I did my youth initiative here. Um, with, that actually, we were in a Challenge Scholars program. Um, it's been a it's been a, uh, a crazy ride. I honestly see all of my work kind of come together. Um, centerfold, just uh, walking to every city commission meeting, coming here, uh, advocating for people, and just trying to spread the positive vibes, regardless of what anybody else is talking about. Um, I kind of want to speak on um, some just to clear a little bit of things up. I definitely uh, feel that um, with the people that were trying to tell me I was being disrespectful towards the people's movement last week, I definitely wasn't. Um, I actually went out there to Alaska with a couple, um, um, older Marine, he was 70 years old with Parkinson's disease. I went out there with an Army veteran, a Navy veteran, a military wife, and I helped repair a kid's Christian camp for about two weeks, no complaining, doing $25,000 of work, 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 worth of free, so... Um, I don't want anybody to feel like uh, just because somebody is a specific race or anything, that really doesn't matter to me. Um, um, I just wanted to clear that up. Also, um, when you see those kids that are out there, those kids that are in the juveniles or that kid that's walking down the street, I was that kid that nobody believed in, that was had all of these special talents that never showed anybody, and now I get the opportunity to do this, and I stand here proud as that kid that brought the gun to East Kenwell High School who actually made a community change in a public school making trying to make public changes and trying to find solutions to the problems that the, I believe that I can solve the world's problems how hard that I work and I'm going to continue to do that until the world knows my name and my humanitarian efforts I will go down as one of the greatest historians you guys have ever seen once again my name is DeAndre Jones I just need you to know that because I work so hard and I work very very so hard to make sure that the next generation um gets to know that their goals are accomplished. One of the events that I actually um, planning to do Friday, I'm taking some kids. Um, I want to take some kids from uh, Union High School to U of M. I actually got to in contact with U of M, and they actually um, have a package for nonprofits that you actually can do a tour at U of M, and you actually can get a discounted ticket. So I know how those rich experience for low-income kids. I am that low-income kid. I am that kid on Social Security. Um, I am that kid, so for everybody that is like, you know, I am kind of the, all of those kind of stereotypes that you see. I am that low, that low income kid. I am that kid that was on social security. I am that kid that comes from a background of just nothing. And now I kind of see my center for working. It's been a blessing. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, welcome. My name is Suber Baker, and I just want to talk a little bit about, uh, again, our police department and how important it is to support them. Ten years ago, you had an active shooter situation. It was downtown. It was New Year's Eve. A manager was shot. A patron was shot. And thanks to the police department at Grand Rapids, the shooter was shot before anyone else could be killed. I was there that night. I can't even begin to describe to you how important it was when those police officers came in not knowing, putting their lives on the line, walking into a door with the only description being active shooter in a building with 200 people. The disrespect that I feel that our police department is getting today is just not right. They need our support. They save lives. They save lives that night. I can't tell you how many lives they save. Believe me, I was there. That shooter came out gun blaring. Please, please. Please move in the direction of supporting our police department, whatever it takes, money, more officers. And Captain Vanderkoy does not deserve what's happening to him today. He's an amazing officer, and he deserves nothing but the utmost respect and our support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Townsend, you want to go next? Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Townsend, Johnny Townsend, and I'm from, not from Grand Rapids. I live in Grand Rapids, 10 Delaware. I, I would like to add something. I came here for a totally different reason, but since the lady has spoken, told you how dangerous the police jobs is and all of that there, which they are dangerous, they risk their lives, then instead of using money up on studies and all of that, you should use money up on to buy a better grade of police officer. If they have that danger of job, what you paying them, you got police officers that can't even fill out an incident report, and a lot of people know that there. You should be able to pay them that money that you're wasting up on studies and maybe you'll get a better grade of police officer, and it'll be better for the city and everything. But I'm not down here to talk about that there because the only reason I'm back down here is because senior citizens are being robbed, and they are being robbed by Comcast Cable Vision. These new housing projects that they are putting up, Comcast have a contract on these housings where you cannot get since senior citizens that are afraid. Basically, just like it was with the Grand Rapids Housing Department, they was afraid to park in a handicapped spot there because of what the Housing Department was doing. These seniors are afraid to go against Comcast or go against these apartment complex because they're telling them that they will put them out, they will lose their subsidies and all of that. And you had something last week about a friend, age-friendly city. I mean, I, I have a problem when people are taking, uh, they telling me, well, don't get cable. You don't have to have cable. I don't have to be robbed if I want cable either. They got people there paying, 89-year-old women paying 85 and 89 dollars and can't even get ESPN. You, get, you basically get the same thing that you can get with an antenna on top of your house. The only thing I want to find out, where do we go to without having to be robbed by Comcast? I would like to know who do we talk to, since you said this is a senior-friendly, age-friendly city and all of that. Thank you. My time is up. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. All right, others who wish to be heard?
Mayor, Hi, Commission Esteban Moreno, retired GRPD as of 2015. I'm now with the Voice of the Badge. Um, at first, I'd like to start out with uh, supporting Captain Kurt Vandekoy. I've known the man for a long, long time. I worked under him for a long, long time. He was actually the sergeant in training when I hired on to GRPD. That's how loyal and long he's been with this department. I've seen him out there working as a commander in a cruiser, taking calls, backing officers during critical incidents, and continuing to go out there and support the community. So what is going on with this? I mean, I think what needs to happen is they need to get the, all the information out there, the information that is pertinent to this deal, and to truly, truly shed light on what happened, okay? Because it's all going on Captain Vandercoin. It's, it's totally wrong. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to turn around and bite y'all. And, and I hate to see it, but it's going to happen. Um, that being said, GRPD, as well as all officers out there, they, they face a ton of stuff. This young man back here talking about juveniles and, and, and kids in schools, that's, that's awesome. I think it's, it's great that he's trying to help out as many ways as he can. Just some quick statistics uh, from the uh, uh, Kent County Juvenile Detention and uh, Juvenile Court. There were 211 uh, resisting and opposing arrests of juveniles between 2015 and 2018. Nine of them resulted in police officers getting injured. Okay, that's, that's, those are kids that are fighting against officers. Why? Because we let them dictate what is going on. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. We're the adults, we're their parents, we need to treat them as what they are, their children. So, that being said, there's good read for you if you get a chance. It's a book called The Sheep, The Wolf, and The Sheepdog. And it's a book written by Colonel David Grossman, which we've had here at the police department at the city's request. Uh, he also has a book on combat. Uh, he refers to the uh, community people as sheep. Uh, officers are the sheepdog, and of course we know who the wolf is. Um, the sheepdog is out there to protect the sheep, and the sheep are most likely in denial. A lot of times they don't want to believe that there's evil out there, but there is. Um, when the sheep uh, dog is out there enforcing other laws like traffic and noise and things like that, um, the sheep tend to fight against them. Uh, but the reality is, like Sue had said, um, when uh, it hits the fan, who do they hide behind? Who do they call? Been there many, many times. I've had toddlers this big telling me to F off, you know, when I was there trying to deal with a, a situation at their house. So please consider what the GRPD is doing. Consider what all officers are doing. And please stand behind them. Don't, don't throw them on from the bus. Stand behind them because that's what you're paid to do. Your standards are up here. GRPD standards are up here. And that's what we're here to do, support each other. Thank you. Thank you. All right, others? Come on up. And then we'll, and then we'll come over here next, OK? Hi, welcome. Good evening, commissioners and other people on the uh, deals. Uh, my name is Gertrude Kroon, and I am just so elated that I was chosen to be on the Public Safety Commission, uh, Committee here uh, with City Commission. Uh, Commissioner Moody uh, uh, asked me to be on the committee, and I, am, I have accepted. And the reason I'm telling you this is because to be on a committee like this, this is the kind of committee where you get to know people. You walk in the, in the uh, building and you get to know, you get to know the policeman. I'm on the committee where I am seeing a, a lot of the policemen, I know a lot of policemen anyway because I've been around the city a long time. And I think for us to believe that policemen are all bad or policemen are all good, it's a misunderstanding. I think we, what we need to do as a, as a community is to find out what the problems are. And when we have a problem, we need to address the problem. Uh, I'm one who firmly believes that there has to be something called protocol. I believe there has to be something called chain of command. I, I think what happened, and which people are all are riled up about, is that maybe the chain of command was just left out of the picture. And I, I know that if a police officer sees something, that, or whether it's on TV or wherever it is, he surely feels he has an obligation to speak up because he's looking out for the well-being of the community. But I think sometimes when we miss the chain of command and we move and make decisions like anybody, so well, I'm just going to make this decision because I feel I can make it. Uh, you know, the thing about calling, the, uh, calling ICE, uh, I'm sure uh, 
uh, Officer Benko was uh, feeling that he's looking out for the good of the community. But when you go beyond the, um, the chain of command and you lose sight of protocol, then you're going to have things that are going to happen and people are going to be up in arms. I, I, I believe that if we want to do better, we have to, we have to act better. We have to make sure that we become a part of the system. I've joined this committee be, uh, because I want to be a part of the system. I want to know the officers. I want to know the other people who are decision makers. And I think the more we get to know each other, the better it's going to be. And if we settle down a little bit and do that, those persons who have, who have disagreements with this, which I can understand, you know, find a committee that you can be on so you can serve, you can be a part of. They can get to know you and you can get to know them. That's how we're going to get better. We're not going to get better by believing everybody's good, believing everybody's bad. That's not the way it is. But if we do better, we can get better as a community. And I think, as I said, that we need to make sure that everybody understands uh, what the rules of order are, what the protocol is, and what the chain of command. Because once we know that, we can uh, accept the outcome of the decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now come on over here. <clears throat> Hi, welcome. Thanks. My name is J.R. Martin. I live in Grand Rapids on Anishinaabe land. There's no need for more police. They don't need our support. Strong communities keep themselves safe without them. I would urge the city of Grand Rapids to stand against white supremacy and fire Kurt Vanderkoy, who has an established, clearly visible, visible record of harassing people of color in West Michigan for years and years. I would also urge the city to immediately stop working with ICE because they're tearing families apart in our community every day. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming up. Uh, Michael Scullin from Garfield Park. Um, I'm going to change the topic a little bit. Um, so I just want to make a few comments about the medical marijuana dispensary special land use process um, to provide the neighborhood association perspective. Um, at Garfield Park, we received at least a dozen inquiries for our participation in the process in the last couple months, including four today. Um, so we've had to learn about this process on the fly. Uh, we want to commend the city planning department for the um, well, very well considered good neighbor plan. Uh, most of the issues that a neighborhood are concerned about, um, security, building appearance, safety, traffic, are all part of this plan. Um, and the ap applicants are proactively contacting us about our concerns. Um, thank you in particular to Landon. I'm sure um, he's a lot busier than we are. Um, but there's two things I want to note. Um, the neighborhood involvement, which is great, um, takes a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we've created a fee at Garfield Park to support that time since um, this time is definitely not funded by CDBG. And um, I know that fee varies wildly across the city um, between different neighborhood associations. So it might make more sense for the city to kind of harmonize that a little mm -hmm. bit or provide some guidance. Um, but I think more importantly, of the 12 applications, only one of them is from Grand Rapids. Um, most of them are from out of state. Um, there's zero applicants from our neighborhood. Um, there's zero investors from our neighborhood. Um, there's obviously a really large demand for these applications. It's obvious people are gonna make a lot of money off of this. Um, and the board, the Garfield Park Board has discussed how it's really frustrating that this money's not gonna build any wealth in our neighborhood, right? Um, furthermore, our applicants are not demographically diverse or representative of our, of our neighborhood at all. Um, Garfield Park is, you know, 50% uh, Latino and 25% African American and 25% white, and um, those are not de the demographics of our applicants. Um, I know this process was meant to be equitable by the city, um, but these aren't the results that we're seeing. Um, so I encourage the commission to consider uh, whether you're willing to accept the results of this process if the results aren't um, achieving what you really are trying to achieve with this process. So uh, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank, thank you. Thanks for that input. Hi, welcome. 
Good evening, City Manager and Commissioners. My name is Elizabeth Rogers Driard, and I live right here on the west side, a couple blocks from the high school. When I walked in tonight, at least six police officers had swiveled to look at me as soon as I walked in the door, some standing in the way so as to force me to walk around them to get all the way through the lobby. I had to then walk past two more plus school security just to get through the doors into the auditorium. At any time, this would be unnerving. At a time where the police in our city are making national news on a regular basis for racist policing, it is even more unnerving. We should do everything we can to make these meetings welcoming for public comment and a heavier police presence to navigate in order to make a public comment and having the police record the audience tonight is not welcoming to communities marginalized and oppressed by the police. In a city where we have both repeated personal stories in public comments and statistical studies showing the racism of our police, there's no way such a heavy police presence here tonight can be seen as welcoming. This does not increase public trust. The voice of the badge should be the voice of the people because the police are supposed to protect and serve the public. It sounds nice to say you support the police in general, but we have a police officer that went out of his way to call in an American citizen to ICE based only on his ethnicity. It's this fact and all the other recorded acts of racist policing now well documented in our community that matter, not platitudes. Please hold racist policing and police officers accountable. Thank you. All right, others wish to be heard? Hi, welcome. Thank you. My name is Sergio Cidar Reyes. Uh, I've, um, I've worked in, in Grand Rapids uh, 17 years. Um, six of those years were here on, on the west side. Um, uh, at not too long ago when, when the police search committee or the new captain police search committee was, was uh, uh, having a session at the city chambers, um, I, I, there was an elderly woman that kept speaking and talking about police. She kept saying that she loves police, that her kids love police, that they celebrate police and, and spend time with police, play basketball with police, do many things with police and people that she knows and, and, and they're friends with police. And so I was thinking that day, and I, and I mentioned this at that last comment, um, that's time that I, I want that for my community and I want that for communities of color. Um, and I think that it's, it's interesting to hear, when I was working here on the west side, uh, I went to a meeting where there were 74 people uh, in attendance at Rockford Construction. Um, 14 of those people, 12 of those people we brought, they were people of color, we brought to Rockford Construction. And uh, there were multiple sessions where uh, the city was listening to, uh, or maybe it was the police listening to community about themselves. Um, and that meeting was going to be 62 people that were going to be white. There was one officer that was, uh, he was black, and there was another person, I think maybe from Rockford Construction. Uh, but the rest of the people of color that we brought, uh, the majority of the people that spoke that day wanted uh, more support for police, more police, more guns, whatever they need, much like what was said tonight. But I think that what white people in, in our community need to uh, understand, and, and I think this is for you also, uh, I think it's the fact that we have white people that clearly are very pro-police, have a very good experience with police, actually proves communities of color's point that why should communities of color have a negative experience with police while we do, uh, while we do not. Uh, not too long ago in December, I was stopped on Burton End Division. I, I, meant, I told this story in the past, but when police, uh, when that officer stuck his hand down, my, uh, grabbed from my belt, I felt his bare uh, fingers down my, in my skin, and they were looking, they were talking to my wife in the car. I was thinking about it: Are they going to also uh, frisk my wife? What am I going to do if they start frisking my wife? And I shouldn't have to think that. They also shouldn't have asked my wife if I was a U.S. citizen, and, and if I did, they had nothing, to, uh, nothing to. Uh, I had nothing to fear. Um, 
the Grand Rapids Police Department belongs to all of us, to all, all communities, and this is something that can't be fixed by the next police officer, po chief of police. I think that this is something that is a community issue that we need to fix together, and that's what I would like to see from, uh, from the uh, commission and the city. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, others who wish to be heard? I'll come over to this side, and then I'll come back over here and try to be fair. Hi, welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Ben Avraham. I live in Grand Rapids. And I would like to reiterate the demand to fire uh, Vanderkoy and to end all cooperation with ICE and support uh, and to support the uh, licenses for all residents of the city uh, to further protect our, uh, our community. Uh, I've heard a lot tonight about laws, um, that we need to uphold the law, that we need to make sure that we're sticking with the law, but we have to remember that laws can be wrong. We have to remember that slavery was legal, the Holocaust was legal, SS guards were officers, officers of the law doing their job. Uh, people returning slaves to their masters were upholding the law that was written into our constitution in this country. So just because something's a law does not mean that it is good, it doesn't mean that it's moral, it doesn't mean that it's proper, and any cooperation with an agency that actively takes people from their families and very often puts them back into dangerous situations. That's not moral or proper, so honestly, I don't care if it's the law, and you shouldn't either, because what's moral and proper should be what stands out to you most. Uh, the incident that we're looking at here is very clearly an officer who racially profiled someone. If the person who had caused a problem at that hospital looked like me, that officer would not have seen my picture on the news and called ICE because they thought that I was an illegal immigrant from Israel or Palestine. They wouldn't have given it a second thought uh, as far as immigration goes, and it's very clear what we're looking at, and that needs to have repercussions for that officer. And you know, some of the people who spoke are very right. He does not deserve what he's getting. He doesn't deserve to be on administrative leave, getting essentially a paid vacation when he should be fired. So once again, I will reiterate that demand to fire Vanderkoy and to uphold what is moral and just. Thank you. All right, others who wish to be heard, hi, welcome. Thank you. Well, my name is Melissa Puplis, and I am a citizen of Grand Rapids. You know, I was brought up to respect our flag. I was taught to stand up for our national anthem. My parents taught me to say thank you to police officers, firefighters, military personnel, and our veterans. I thought I was doing my part. I thought I was doing enough. You know, it wasn't until I began to get more involved in various events with Johnny Brand and I became friends with several officers throughout various departments that I realized the magnitude of our officers' job descriptions. Our officers begin each shift realizing that they might never come home. You know, their families sit up at night hoping and praying that their loved one is going to walk through that door. I could stand here and rattle off statistic after statistic that would show and prove our need for additional officers. You could all spend thousands and thousands of dollars on surveys and additional data. The solution seems kind of simple. You know, why not ask our officers? My supervisors ask me continuously, what do I need to succeed and what do I need to do to excel at my job and fulfill my, my job responsibilities? And I'm wondering why don't we do the same for our officers? The GRPD is a top-notch department. We are beyond blessed to have such amazing men and women that protect us daily. And our department has instituted several amazing programs. We have Coffee with the Cops, we have On Base, which is a youth baseball program, Youth Police Academy, Citizen Police Academy. Again, I could go on and on, but the bottom line is if we don't have additional officers, you know, it's quite simple. Less officers, less morale. Uh, less traffic enforcement, less investigators to follow up on crimes, less visibility, and less safety. I guess I encourage you, I, I challenge you, and I, I darn near beg you, go on a, go on a ride along. You know, there's, there's several officers here tonight, and uh, I, I would hope you take advantage of that, and uh, 
I guess I promise you my friends will keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. All right, others who wish, I'm going to come over here and then I'll, oh, it go. I'm not used to having two lines, so my apologies. Hi, welcome. Members of the commissioner, my name is Michael Farage. I live at 226 Yule. I'm going to be extremely short and right to the point. I think Captain Vanderkoy needs to be immediately reinstated. This was, a, this was a closed case. If you look at many of the people's Facebook pages that complained about it, they're waving communist flags on their social media. Communism is basically a police state, so I don't know why they're upset at the police, but this was an open and shut case. The victim here is the veteran who's being abused by individuals that hate veterans. They post it right on the social media. They call them baby killers. Clearly this issue is being exposed for political purposes, period. It's not even a debate. Captain Vander Coy is a decorated hero like many of our men and women in the Grand Rapids Police Department. And for many, many of us, I think we need many, many more. That is going to be one of my platforms campaigning this summer. And in many ways, I think it's very, very sad to see the people we elect to be strong and to be leaders in a time of leadership cave to many individuals who do not even live in the city and do not even vote in this city. And with that said, I never feel ever the need to defend an elected official, regardless of who they are, but um, I visited St. Joe's home when you were there, Ms. Mayor. I don't think there's a person in this room that values children and kids who needed help more than you. I think you were a great role model and leader, and I think when you left, that that home has never been the same. And anyone to actually make that accusation is completely false. Maybe the last time I compliment you, so enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fresh. Hi, welcome. Hello, Pim. Good evening. Good evening. I just have a few um, concerns. Um, first, I would like to agree with the young lady that stood up here and stated that. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to restart your clock. Can you start with your name and the city that you live in? Um, my name is Beloved. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Um, I would like to agree with the young lady that stood up and said that for this to be a community meeting, it does not feel comfortable and welcoming with the cameras all around and just the atmosphere here, it isn't comfortable. Second of all, I would like to say that I do agree. I do not have a clear understanding while this inv investigation is going on that the officer is still receiving um, an administrative, he's on an administrative leave receiving his benefits while this case is still being investigated. Um, I really don't think that it's fair that that is how everything is playing out. Um, number two, um, I would like to know the commissioners that are sitting on the board, how many actually live in the community and speak for the community and represent, represent the community needs? Because I noticed that Grand Rapids goes by the numbers, but who's actually tangible in that community to say, hey, this is what's going on and this is what we need? I also have a question of, you all help, you hold your meetings in the morning, and that's where the decisions are being made, but then in the evening, you come back and say, it's more of a venting session, where the community can vent, and you all sit up there and you don't say anything, and it's just listening to us. So where does the community be able to give their input in the voting, their decision on what's going on, and say, hey, we agree or don't disagree, or we um, disagree with what's happening so I know you all can't say anything now it just makes me uncomfortable of coming to a meeting just to vent because that's what I feel these sessions are even though it's a commissioner meeting we want more than just to be able to come and vent we want to be able to ask questions and allow for you all to respond back when we're giving the questions to feel like we're accomplishing something because at this point just coming out being able to vent I don't see it getting anywhere. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. All right. Others who wish to be heard? Oh, okay. Yep, come on. 
Hi, my Hi. name is Lionel Legrone. Work at Grand Rapids. Um, we've been here before, right? We we've been here before. We uh, the history has been well documented with the GRPD. Um, one of the problems that I see uh, as somebody who works in the community on a daily basis is that the municipal mindset in Grand Rapids and most of West Michigan has been cultivated inside the processes of displacement for black and brown people. Once you decide that you are no longer willing to submit to those processes of displacement and you speak up about it, then the word accountability becomes synonymous with evil. And that confuses me that when somebody is asked to be held accountable for their actions, all of a sudden you are anti-police, anti-officer. The officers are doing such great work when nobody said that. All we're saying is thank you for holding people accountable for their actions. So um, I just want to thank you guys for doing such a good job and holding people accountable when they deserve to be held accountable. And that we're not saying this is a reflection on the entire police department. We believe there are good officers out there, but this notion that holding an officer accountable for uh, improper conduct, being evil or targeting or police hate or whatever, is absolutely ridiculous. It totally rises to the realm of foolishness, and I thank you for not allowing yourself to be bullied. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Legron. All right, come on up. Hi, welcome. Hi there. I am Viola Stevens, and I'm from Grand Rapids. Um, I'm terrified of public speaking, so <laughs> just Your throwing time. that Take out there. Breath. All right. There is a crisis not only in Grand Rapids, but across this nation. A war is being waged against authority from our president to our fathers and our law enforcement. Our law enforcement have a target on their back. R the race card is thrown out as a defense for bad choices and bad behavior, yet we never address the hatred and complete disrespect of our police officers. I have neighbors that have moved from the south side to the north side and um, from the west side who, um, and kids that I mentor, um, and they tell me that they are afraid of their neighborhoods, not because of the police, but because of the crime. They tell me that there are 12 year olds that walk around with guns, there are shootings, there's violence, there's drugs, yet there are no protests. But we protest and disrespect the Grand Rapids Police Department. From the beginning of this incident, the community thro uh, was throwing out the words um, PTSD veteran and racism about a young man whose poor choice to set fire to our hospital helipad endangering our citizens, yet we are targeting the procedures of the GRPD. We throw out these words to somehow distract or soften the criminal act he committed. Though I am thankful for this man's service to our country, it does not excuse his criminal behavior. The Grand, Rap Grand Rapids Police Department is continually training their officers, officers and police uh, policies, but the community community does nothing to change. The community needs to stop using the race card and needs to take responsibility if we truly want things to change. We need to rise as a community and teach our children to respect and submit to authority. We need to teach right from wrong. The community holds the solution for the problem. Little, little people protest and complain. Great minds come together and figure out a solution. When leadership goes against our police department, it is an attack on the community it serves. Our police have the most important job in this city. They are the thing that stands between us and evil, between us and darkness, between community and anarchy, between living together and killing each other, between law and lawlessness. Divided we stand, united we fall. Or I'm sorry, Thank I you. said that backwards. <laughs> we knew what you meant. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Appreciate it. All right, I'll come over here. Good evening. My name is Catherine Mish, and I live in the First Ward. 
There are some occasions where one can, simply can't sit down and, and be silent, but must stand up and speak uh, for what is right or speak out against for what is going on that is wrong. And this is one of those occasions. I have to say publicly that I am 100% in support of Captain Curtis Vanderkoy and the Grand Rapids Police Department. Curtis Vanderkoy is a good man and a good police officer. And he has been for so many years. He's been doing this job since most of you were in elementary school. He's a good man. What you're doing to him is wrong. What you're doing to the Grand Rapids Police Department is wrong. It's very, very sad that this, the leadership of this city has now become so anti-police. It's very, very obvious, I think, to those of us who are reading the current events that are happening in our city. And as a First Ward resident and voter, I would love to hear publicly what the First Ward commissioners think. I haven't heard a, a public statement yet from the two of them. I've heard from some other commissioners on this board, but I would love to hear from them. I also would like to address a, a tangential but somewhat related issue of what I've read in MLive about um, MLive's story that the city has city attorney has recently dropped some charges against some individuals based on some political pressure that has come from other administrators within uh, city government. <clears throat> no, I never believe what I read in MLive because it's usually wrong. Um, they usually don't have their facts straight. So I don't believe most of the details in that story. But I have sat in that seat and I've had the exact same thing happen to me where other city administrators tried to bring pressure against the city attorney to, to drop charges in certain cases, whether it's issues of uh, preferred political groups or personal friends, whatever it might be. On those occasions, I never caved to that kind of political pressure. I have faith that Ms. Hitchcock would not do so either. Um, but I don't have faith in the city administrators I read about because I know they've done it. They've done it to me. Um, and I'm sure they're doing it still to this day. And that, again, is also wrong. The justice process should be allowed to run its course, and the process should happen in the courts of law, not in this political arena. So those are my two comments for this evening, and I hope you have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Mish. Hi, welcome. Is, my name is Devine. I'm a native and resident in the third ward city of Grand Rapids. Um, specifically, got a couple things on my mind. Mayor and the entire commission, I'd like to know after watching the mayor interview on the five o'clock news, you failed to comment as the mayor of the city of Grand Rapids on this issue dealing with the police department as if you are not part of the solution and accountability and placing the city manager pretty much under the bus as though the commission has no power in the decision being made for the community and y'all just playing politics in regards to this situation where anytime anybody in regards to this situation is being asked a question i'm trying to figure out how it ain't an answer because at the end of the day it's a community issue um Years ago, you declared the city of a city the book of the year. But in 2019, when dealing with situations like this and others, looking back, it appears as though the city of Grand Rapids is utilizing these platforms and things like gear as smoke and mirrors for whites to pay their mortgages, studying black and brown communities. <laughs> and the city to just keep on coming out, venting over and over about the police and what's actually going on. Uh, city manager, definitely wanna salute you to making the change because over and over for my entire life, we've always seen it in directly at the internal affairs level and know and understand exactly that that is not the solution to really be coming out because it's just the police, police and the police and covering each other hand. So just like right now, you know, you, you've made that decision and, and pushed some type of accountability, although of course, as it was mentioned, uh, it's really no real reprimand in regards to what's actually happening because he's getting paid at this point in time. So he's just moved, but like at the end of the day, um, it, it is a change and soon as that change come you hear all the coded language all the lies about the community being so bad and 
what the police actually need to do. When at the end of the day, like we put our, our vote, our voice and our power in this elected body right here to actually be able to address these type of solutions with the community concerns. So like, even though everybody's coming up here and we're just stating our comments, like we really want some answers and to see the actual action um, in regards to what the community is really saying, not the establishment in the police department institution. Thank you. All right, others who wish to be heard? Oh, yeah, yes, come on up, Mr. Miller. Well, watch the dog back in support of uh, Johnny's, who's back, who's back now, his uh, battle on the behalf of senior citizens against Comcast. Though I've never used it. I've heard plenty of complaints where I've, I've lived. It's outrageous they were allowed to skip town like Metro Hospital. You don't regulate rep Metro, but you do uh, regulate Comcast. You should bring them back from Wyoming. Uh, you'd be much more responsible to uh, all the citizens of, of Grand Rapids. You have a, a, a panel that's supposed to be do regulating them, and uh, Tristan Allen once said they almost, they rarely meet. So uh, that would be one solution to them. get on uh, Comcast back. They're a monopoly, and they should be treated as such. Um, next, uh, in terms of uh, uh, Captain Vandercoy, uh, uh, he's being railroaded uh, by a newcomer in town. Uh, Mr. Washington, uh, week after week, he allows a weekly hate sheet, uh, a hypocritical hate sheet called El Bothero, into uh, all, nearly all the buildings, city buildings in town. Uh, El Velotero is leading the crusade against Captain uh, Capitan A.J. Abate, the Baja, or the Baja, or uh, Entry Thara, the uh, Udano uh, Ice uh, Activistas, Lyceans, who despido por el right racismo. La Cismo? Excuse me, but on the same hit sheet, page three, half a page of the article is dedicated to. And the slur was supposed to be uh, local. El desayuno loco. El desayuno loco. What <laughs> hypocrites. Spineless. Why, is it, uh, why does El Vothoro get to come in week after week advertising El desayuno loco when this is a so-called alleged slur which is destroying him, trying to destroy a man who's been around uh, apparently 39 years? Next, going back 180 years, or can you find a more disgraceful surrender uh, in City Hall history? Uh, uh, the, we're dealing with surrender monkeys up there. It was outrageous. Calling, you should never have left. You stood your ground. You're, you're paid for that Tuesday. Uh, uh, and we're still dealing with the ongoing Mexican invasion. Uh, the. Uh, So, well, I'm a citizen, man. Uh, uh, Mr. Miller? Uh, the uh, hate group chanting, already chanting, began during a Jedi Item 5 last week when the name Miller was mentioned. Clear targeting, so they started chanting, and you never recognized me on the first public participation uh, uh, period. At that point, only 19 radicals, 19, were on hand to chant. Before that, most of the turncoats refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Mr. Miller, your, your time is up. Thank you. And, and I just want to remind you, I did apologize to you last week. So. You want to be heard. Just I, call I know. In, call I know. I'm sorry. I'm glad tonight. you had a chance to speak tonight. Thank you, Mr. Miller. All right. Others who wish to be heard? Good evening. Um, my name is Lorena Aguayo Marquez, and I live in the third ward. Um, I just want to say that I know that how hard it is um, for, for families and friends of police officers. My brother used to be a police officer in the city of Chicago in Waukegan, Illinois. So I know how it is to worry about someone that you love, about getting hurt. But also, he also is an immigrant, a Mexican immigrant, and that's why he left the force 
because there's so much institutionalized racism within the system that he wanted to, he wanted to go change it. It's an impossible task. Um, so, and I know that this happens in Grand Rapids. Um, people of color, um, my friends, my neighbors, it's a different story. We heard how the police is great, the police is that, and yes, there are great police officers. My brother was a great police officer when he was. But they're also bad officers, and that's one of the reasons he left. And I want Grand Rapids to be a city where police officers are great for everyone, regardless of their race and the color of their skin. So that's why we're here, to make police officers, the Grand Rapids Police Department accountable. And that's why commissioners hire a city manager, and the city manager hires a chief of police. So the chief of police could run a fair and equitable police department. And when there are police, um, police officers who are not being accountable, so they could be accountable for their actions. And that's why the people came out to say, hey, there's, like we said, there's studies, right? We keep referring to those studies. We know there's racial profiling in our community. And we're here to say, we need to make sure that the people, our officers are being accountable. And that's why I'm here. For Chief Kittle, our interim chief right now, and the next chief officer that we hire of the um, police department, we need a bold leader that actually is going to take the decisions and make their officers accountable for their actions. Thank you. Thank you. All right, others who wish to be heard? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna close this public comment period and I'm gonna to turn to my colleagues. And I will start with our first ward since we are in our first ward. And uh, why don't I start down here with Commissioner Rapart. Yes, uh, thank you everybody for coming. It's, glad to ha it's good to have everybody here in the first ward this evening. And uh, I feel the heaviness with all of you. This is really a, a grave moment for the city of Grand Rapids and I appreciate the presence of all who spoke both this week and last. I think that your presence elevates this situation and holds it in its proper um, place of significance. Uh, and clearly, community trust is in the balance at this moment. So I will say that I'm encouraged by the blunt and honest conversation that my colleagues have had over the past week and that we've also had with city staff. I believe that that's gonna to lead toward an outcome that demonstrates progress. While there's a whole lot more that I would like to say and a lot of things, a lot of laments, I have a long list of laments um, that I've created about this whole situation. Our next step is to follow the process that's been initiated and see that through to the end. I am looking forward to seeing the fruit of bringing our department and some trusted partners together to carefully evaluate with regard to how we relate to federal entities. I appreciate the openness of GRPED to once again come to the table for that work and also to those who are willing to help them with it to guarantee success for the community. So it's my hope that in this difficult moment that in the end faith can be restored in our city to be a safe and welcoming place for everyone. I know it can be done. Um, and. I can assure you that we up here are committed toward taking the right steps to be in that kind of city. Thank you, Commissioner. Well said. Commissioner? Thank you, Mayor, and, and thanks especially for all of you to brave the cold weather and come out tonight. We have had a lot of comments, emails, phone calls about this particular issue, and I just uh, want you to know that we respect everybody's right to reach out to us to petition your commission. It is part of our First Amendment rights to have free speech and petition. And it's important as well to inspect, respect everybody's rights when it comes to due process as we sort through this situation. I know it's challenging. It's challenging for all of us, for the department, for the community, for the city commission, and for our, our, our chief of police and city manager. It's also controversial. And it's also very confusing because it's impossible to get all the facts from MLive. It will take time. So I urge you to be patient as we move through this process and respect the rights of those who are involved. 
It is a slow but very important process, and I think it's just a, we call on you and ask that you all be patient with us as we get through this together. And I very much appreciate again that uh, that we are in a situation now. I remember three and a half years ago I was sworn in for this particular term, and you may recall those of you who are there that I said we are not immune to what's going on the na in the nation and. What I had in mind in particular was policing and immigration, and here we are today dealing with it. But what's most important is that we deal with it honestly, openly, and transparently, and that is what we are trying to do. But at the same time, not everything can be transparent until we sort things out. There are things we don't know, we don't understand, and that need to be discovered and then eventually explained to this community. So thank you for your patience, and thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you, Commissioner. Over here, I think I'll start in the middle with uh, Commissioner O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, be I begin my comments this evening expressing my gratitude to the amazing team at Grand Rapids Public Schools and Union High School for not only opening their doors and welcoming us and the community into this space, but also for their partnership with the city and so many endeavors that are focused on improving the lives of children and families in Grand Rapids. Again this evening, we heard from many concerned voices in our community. I appreciate the opportunity we all are afforded to engage in this civil discourse. I respect the passion and dedication and convictions of everyone who took the time to join us and to share their opinions and thoughts regarding concerns within our community, regardless of the, their position on the issue. Tonight, I ask you all for your understanding. Having observed many of those who spoke both last week and this evening, they, are passionate, they have passionately advocated for the rights of workers and the ability to organize and unionize. I ask that you respect the process at hand, which was fairly negotiated and bargained for as, a, as part of a labor contract. I cannot and will not speak to the personnel matters related to the ongoing investigation into the events surrounding the detainment of Mr. Ramos Gomez, because it is incumbent that we honor the due process rights of all those involved. I respectfully request that everyone in our community do the same. I trust that our city manager will ensure fairness and impartiality in overseeing the ongoing investigation. There have been conti continued to be concerns from our commun community about the police department in the city of Grand Rapids and what they should not be doing and as it relates to communication and co cooperation with ICE. I believe that creating a policy about what we should not be doing is short-sighted. What I do believe, however, is that our city needs to have a more clear and proactive policy about how, why, when, and under what circumstances, by which level of command within our police department, is authorized and or required to contact or report, or report to other law enforcement agencies, including county, state, and federal agencies. Furthermore, we need to clear, clearly communicate these policies, procedures, and protocols with the community to ensure there is accountability when interactions occur with our police department. Our city manager has directed our police department to prioritize the development of these processes and protocols. I believe this policy review and development is paramount to rebuilding trust within our community. I look forward to discussing these recommended policies and policy changes in the near future and making changes that will improve to in improved outcomes. Last week I had the opportunity to attend the GRPD annual awards and see individuals and units from across our department recognized for their bravery, for their integrity, and for their commitment to serving and protecting people in Grand Rapids. I know that there are many men and women within our department who are not recognized but who do their job every day with honor, with respect, and without bias. And I thank them for doing it that way. That is all. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lanier. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to start by thanking um, GRPS for opening up their doors here at Union High School. Um, I've been visiting Union quite frequently um, as my son is playing basketball here on, on weekends. So this is been com coming to this territory quite frequently. But um, just want to thank them for that and, and thank all of you who have come and um, those of you who have come tonight as well as those who came last week to share your um, public comment. Um, these are really challenging times that we're in now. And I think on the other side of challenging times, we usually land with um, um, better outcomes for our community. And it's because of the work of people in, in those of you who are on opposing sides of this issue that we've been discussing um, lately. 
Um, usually people on opposing sides coming together to try and find solutions is the best way of getting to a better outcome for the community at large. And I'd like to see that after um, the um, investigation that the city manager is undergoing, that at, at the end of that, that there would be um, dialogue, meaningful dialogue, so that people can be heard and solutions could be um, um, thought out and executed um, for our community. I'd also like to um, acknowledge my colleague and mentor, um, Commissioner Elias Lumpkins, who is here this evening. Um, thank you so much for being here. And your words and your letter, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I want to join my colleagues in saying thank you to Union High School and Mr. Nelson, Principal Nelson, for opening up the doors to uh, Union High School. I will admit that I had a flashback as a little boy in a talent show on the stage, and mm -hmm. had stage fright for a second when I sat up here, but I'm I'm better now. Um, I uh, there was I think uh, I was uh, beloved who was the uh, the resident who stepped up and made the comment about the desire to hear from the uh, the commissioners and I've said it before I'll say it again this is a very uh, at times very difficult place to to sit uh, because of our inability based on rules to not respond and I think that we live in a day and age where the expectation is if you're asked a question you want to hear a response and uh, I would share in your frustration uh, in that we are not set up in that manner uh, to be able to respond to every question that comes our way during this, during the city commission meetings. And I think it just speaks to the need for an even greater commitment to engage in community and have dialogue so that you can ask your questions. And I think that uh, tonight and uh, really over the course of the last couple of years, what we are seeing is Grand Rapids is very much a microcosm of what's occurring in our country. And we just happen to uh, be experiences, experiencing these things right here in our front door. I've also said before that ultimately I see Grand Rapids as a legitimate medium-sized city with big city problems. And uh, I also see Grand Rapids as, the, as, as having the potential to be a model city because there is that opportunity to uh, pull folks together and really have conversations about some very, very difficult issues. Uh, I uh, do not hold uh, any grudge or am not upset with anyone who is here who is not pleased, who is righteously indignant about uh, your role, or I'm sorry, your position uh, on these issues. You have that right uh, to be angry. You have that right to speak and to share your anger and your frustration. And uh, I don't, uh, if, if, we, if we had to sit here till, until midnight, I'd be okay with that uh, because again, that's the, that's the, that is the right that you have. And yet, I do want to interject, or I do, I do want to ask you to consider uh, the great complexity uh, that is before us with, with, with these issues. Um, if it's one thing that I know is that uh, most of the issues that we deal with are not black and they are not white, they are gray. And uh, that is something that uh, quite often uh, folks don't want to hear or embrace because we're looking for answers. Well, uh, we're talking at the end of the day about humanity, and we're talking about the complexity of humanity. And in all of this, uh, I think probably the, 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 the way in which we could go, in which we're look, if we're seeking to find a real solution, it is a recommitment on behalf of everyone, regardless of what side you sit on with these issues, to simply uh, respect and dignify the individual, to not violate anyone's dignity, period. Whether it's our role as commissioners, whether it's the role of you as citizens and your conversations with us, whether it's law enforcement. I think the moment we step over the line and we violate someone's dignity, the natural response is to, is to do just that, is to respond, is to be angry. It is, it is part of what it means to be human. And so uh, my hope in all of this is that we get back to the, to the really simple the really simple task of not violating anyone's dignity and that we, that we respect the personhood of everyone and see everyone as having value, regardless of their zip code, their, their national status, all that, their title that they hold, doesn't matter. They, everyone in this room, everyone in our city has value. And if we could start there, I think we would, 
uh, make major strides moving forward. So again, thank you for your presence here on this evening, and uh, we hope to see you in a couple of weeks on the 26th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, City Attorney, Certainly. any comments? Thank you, Mayor. Um, to the Grand Rapids Police Department and supporters of the Grand Rapids Police Department, I appreciate your kind of comments and uh, concerns about the decision that I made on May 1st, 2018 regarding the protest issue. And I just want to assure you that I have heard you loud and clear. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, city Manager? Thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. I want to thank everyone for uh, being here tonight. Let me thank uh, not only the citizens who came and shared their concerns, but the employees who also not just came for the regular commission meeting for the items, but there were several employees who were in the foyer uh, to provide information as part of our effort to be collaborative and, and engage with community, and I appreciate uh, them from doing that. I, I'm going to refrain from having any comments on the uh, any of the pending uh, personnel matters. Um, I would uh, just kind of echo the, the importance as much as uh, as city manager I have to be mindful of the community and, and certainly be respectful of everyone's civil rights and human rights and make sure there's due process in that, uh, those con issues. But likewise when it comes to employee issues uh, such as uh, there is in, in civil rights there's also employee rights and, and there's due process that has to occur uh, in, regarding those issues and so I would ask uh, the community to be respectful of, of that as well. Uh, I do want to um, say uh, I did this past uh, weekend enjoy my first experience at the uh, Neighborhood Summit and I uh, had to engage, I uh, had an opportunity to engage a lot of staff and uh, community there and it was uh, very, very well attended. I think some over 600 uh, residents uh, one of our highest attendances ever, and uh, uh, it was very, very um, enlightening to see how uh, the community connected and engaged with each other. And that, that is the hope uh, that I uh, see for this community, that we would uh, be able, even in the difficult times, uh, have meaningful, respectful dialogue where we uh, learn from each other and begin to uh, uh, grow as a community. And I think... Uh, uh, we will be um, uh, better on the other end of this um, issue than, than where we are right now. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. City Clerk? Just briefly, um, there will be a May 7th election for voters that reside in Kentwood Public Schools. So that's about 3,100 residents of the City of Grand Rapids down in uh, the Third Ward. Um, and we'll be consolidating those precincts to vote at Brookside Christian Reform Church. So, so for those of you out there watching, um, there will be a May 7th election, but you need to live in Kentwood Public Schools. And then also with Proposal 3 passing, um, we're, we're, if you, that all voters are now eligible to vote absentee um, and not have to be beholden to those six things. So we're busy working on that process, but um, you can contact the clerk's office to be on a permanent AV list to get applications for future elections. And so it's grandrapidsmi.gov um, forward slash AV list, and you can easily sign up to be on that AV list. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just add, uh, I don't usually make comments at the end of these meetings, but I'm gonna just add a couple of things. One, I wanna echo what many of my colleagues said around this table, and um, I want to acknowledge the really strong feelings uh, that we've heard, uh, not just tonight, but last week and uh, over this past week. And uh, these are difficult times. And I, I want to share with you that what gives me hope is really everyone in this room. Uh, I believe that we're an amazing city, a very special city, and that's because people care deeply and they love their community. And now is an opportunity to hold on to that love and that compassion and our care for one another and not let challenges such as this divide us. I always have fundamentally believed ever since I was uh, probably before I could walk that there is opportunity and obstacles. And to me, this is an opportunity for growth <coughs> and for learning and for coming together and building relationships, and I hope that we take advantage of that. 
So thank you everyone who came out tonight. Really appreciate you being here. Please, please, please drive safe. Thanks. We're adjourned.